And Debbie's pointing out that this is where, down at the bottom of the steps, is where we were four days ago when we were here. We walked down that trail and over there and thought that that section of wall down there was the only remnant. But apparently this is the reconstructed stockade. Now we're gonna move on to other historical sites around Bedford. On the west end of town, or US 30, heads west, is this classic old ceramic golf station. Still operating as a commercial filling station. My goodness, excellent, love it. This is a bank of Coke ovens outside Riddlesburg, Pennsylvania. Used to be serving a blast furnace here. These have been restored. The blast furnace here operated from 1868 into the 1930s. It's a double bank, and that means that there's Coke ovens on this side and on the other side of this block structure. They're beehive ovens, so-called because inside they're built in a brick-shaped dome, or in a brick dome shape, resembling an old beehive. These Coke ovens served a blast furnace originally owned by the Kemble Coal and Iron Company in 1868, and then taken over and run and restored, or, excuse me, and then taken over, renovated, rebuilt circa 1913 by the Colonial Iron Company. These Coke ovens operated into the 1930s. And in fact, when they were restored at one time, they were actually operated temp uh, once, uh, on special occasions by a local resident who worked in these coke ovens as a young man. Uh, it was a long, long time ago, and of course I missed that. But it's interesting to see that they've actually saved some of the tools that were used to work the coke when it was in the ovens. You can see them hanging up there. That looks like a rake of, that would have been used to shape the coke into a flat bed inside the ovens. And once the raw coal was put in there, as it ignited, it would then be baked in the absence of oxygen. They would brick up these entrances. And I'll show you over here. There's one of the entrances with the brick just stacked up in there. And that would block up the entrance and cut off the flow of air so the, coke, the coal wouldn't burn, it would bake. Bake off all the impurities so what you had left was a cold cake, thus coke, co coal cake would be used in fueling the blast furnace. And here's an old photograph of the blast furnace itself. And there's a picture of the Coke ovens under construction. Very nice. And remember, remembrance of Charles Gracie, who was instrumental to the Coke oven restorations in the 90s, 1931 to 2021. Here they have the bar hanging there to show you how the, they, they actually supported the, the, the long bar. Here you can see the, the diagram of what it looked like inside. And a whole bunch of pictures. If I, turn, if I show you that picture and if I turn that way, looking up that way toward where, the, where our truck is parked at the end of the bank and that big gray thing behind is the top of the slag pile from the blast furnace itself. And looking off to the left then, this is what you would have seen back in the day. Well, here's a really nice picture of the back of the blast furnace. And these concrete, these concrete piers, boy we're getting attacked by mosquitoes here. These concrete piers are still standing, or there's parts of them still standing, and we'll go over there and see if we can't get you to look at those too. 
Here are the, here are the beehive ovens at Rudelsburg, Pennsylvania. And this display, very nice display, is the Eagle Project of a Boy Scout, Jonathan L. Zimmerman from Troop 494. Very nice. There's the last remains of the blast furnace complex at Riddlesburg. Concrete piers of the High Line, railroad tracks that went over the, uh, behind the stock house to dump raw materials. That would have been coke, limestone, and iron ore to be loaded into the blast furnace, which site has now been taken over by, looks like, the uh, uh, refuse pickup and uh, township buildings there with road salt and uh, gravel, cinders, plumbing materials, paving materials, and of course, close up to us, 21st century technology, a solar farm, which is pointed away from the sun. Oh, you gotta love it. Sick transit, Gloria Mundi. Well, it's getting toward the end of the day. We've been on the road most of the day, and we've been all over the history of Bedford County. We've gone from the French and Indian War through the coke fired blast furnaces, and now we find ourselves here in Everett, Pennsylvania, at the southern end of the, Hun the old Huntington and Broadtop Mountain Railroad. And uh, there's the, the uh, preserved Everett Station, and uh, a recent addition since the last time I was here, which was a, a good while ago, probably about 19 years, is a uh, cosmetically restored steam locomotive and a nice looking uh, cabin car or caboose back there. So we're gonna walk around and uh, in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll take time to uh, see some of our other ones. Oh, wow. Neat. Number 11. Blackers describing the caboose and the uh, locomotive. Thanks for watching. Please click the thumbs up icon to like the video and share with your friends via email or social media. I'd love to have you subscribe and if you do, please click the little bell icon so you'll get notifications whenever I post a new video. Goodbye!